A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. The church in every time and place has the privilege of extending God's offer of love and relationship to people. Our welcome is really part of a much larger and more comprehensive welcome. Our open doors are really an invitation to God. When we share in communion, we are really asking people to sit at the table with Jesus. When we ask people to join us in any aspect of our life together, we are really just making sure God's invitation is as wide and available as possible. This is why the word invite is the first word of Broadway's mission. It speaks to the hospitality and the intentionality of relationship. How each one of us in a way represents God in offering relationship. If you call Broadway home, you have been invited here. And we think that is somehow part of God's plan for you and for us and for the world. And if you call Broadway home, then we want you to make it part of your life's mission to speak and act in ways that draw other people to God. At Broadway, everyone is welcome, no exceptions. We create environments where children are nurtured and safe. We create context for loving community. We want to be a place where ordinary people discover a love that changes them. The other way to think about our invitation and that missional word invite is that we are each invited to follow Jesus, which just means to be a learner. That's what the disciple is, is a learner, a, a person on the way with Christ, on the path, doing life with Jesus. The way that is most helpful for me to think about that is to see how Jesus offered that invitation when he walked this earth, how he ex extended it himself. He went up to people. He actively engaged them. He bridged the gap. He took the initiative. Some guys were fishing. Jesus walks up and says, come, follow me. Coming to Jesus or saying yes to Jesus was the start of that process. And it is just the start. That's when things got interesting Jesus said, come follow me and I will give, give your ordinary life divine purpose. You have somehow been invited into this understanding of how to do life. Invited to Broadway, invited to church, invited to Jesus, invited into God's story. Along the way, for each of us, God has used people to issue this invitation. You might think of a name, of someone who helped bring you along in some way, like Larry Johnson, who invited my grandmother and my mother and my uncle to church, knowing that my grandfather was an alcoholic and that my family needed a support system. I am here today because of an invitation that came years before I was born. Or I think about Margaret and Gib Thomas, who treated me like an adopted grandchild and who were always waiting for me in the pew, in the pew ahead of me to welcome me to church. Most Sundays, that welcome came with some kind of gift through my formative years, presents, candy, things from their travels. All of us are here today because of that kind of hospitality, because our church has been intentional in some way about this invitation. And whoever invited you actually in turn was invited by someone and they were invited by someone and they were invited by someone. In that great chain of invitation, we link all the way back to Jesus himself. That chain of invite, that invitational chain links back to the heart of God for you. That ancient chain of invitation includes about 110 years of links in our particular church here at Broadway. And we will form links that connect to the generations that follow us. And this is our vision, it's our goal and our challenge to be the most authentic and welcoming place in our community 
while we have the stewardship of the opportunity. Now, Jesus ate with sinners. This is in fact what he got in trouble for the most. And I'm sure there were many people in his time who would have said, yes, you should be welcoming, but what I've discovered is that that but cancels out the invitation. It negates the intentional hospitality it takes to get in trouble for the things that Jesus got in trouble for. Jesus got in trouble for his wide open welcome. Therefore, the church today must also have this edge to it. If we aren't getting in trouble for who we are hanging with, we probably haven't quite figured out the wide open welcome of Jesus. If we aren't creating communities that break down cultural, racial, social, or economic division, then our welcome won't be as wide as God needs it to be. And I know that sometimes we see those concepts through political lenses or political agendas, but this is our Jesus agenda. If everybody isn't welcome, then nobody really is. John Ortberg writes, if ever, there were a true just as I am community. If ever there was a community where everybody could bring all their baggage and brokenness with them without neat and tidy, happy endings quite yet. If ever there was a group where everyone was loved and no one pretended, we could not make enough room inside the building. We are looking for people ready to make sure that Broadway is just such a place. Not only do we dream of being a place where all people are invited into a family of faith, but we also dream of being a place where we grow in our love for God and love for others. We dream of being a life-giving community where hurts are healed, where faith is restored, and where people become fully alive. The truth is, from the cradle to the grave, we are all being shaped. It's not a question of if, but rather by what and how much. The process of becoming, it never ever ends for us. And so things like pain and shame will try to form us. Things like fear and insecurity will try to mold us. Things like the, the desire to prove ourselves and, and to please others will try to direct our lives. But we dream of being a place where above and beyond all else, we are being shaped by God's grace. That's why from the moment that children are born, we begin to pray God's blessing over their lives. And we begin repeating the truth to them that God made them that God loves them, and that Jesus wants to be their forever friend over and over and over again. It's why we put the gift of the words of scripture into their hands, and why we place loving, Jesus-following mentors into their lives, all so that they can begin to see and feel and respond to the God who always has and always will be pursuing them with love. As those children grow into youth, it's why we help them to discover how their story is a part of the larger story of God and why we help guide them to encounter God through worship, to engage with Christ through small groups and to embrace the Holy Spirit by serving him in our church, in our community and far beyond all so that they can be surrounded by the love of God that shapes us during some of the most challenging and formative years of their lives. And then for adults, it's why we, we strive to create these small, safe contexts where we can discover more of who God is and who we are in Him, where we can wrestle with tough questions with people who, who might not always share our perspective, where we can, we can also begin to discover how our faith intersects with our real world in, in a real world that, that has real challenges and where we can get honest about our hurts, habits, and hangups. 
all so that God's grace can flow into the places where we need it the very, very most in our lives. From the cradle to the grave, we are all being shaped. But we dream of being a place where above and beyond all else, we are being shaped by God's grace, which always grows our love for God and love for people. Over the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to participate in one of our Into the Wilderness small groups. It was the first time that I and many of the other ladies in our groups um, had the opportunity to, to participate in a group like this one, um, a more recovery style group that's, that's focused not so much on studying a book of the Bible or a book written by someone else, but rather kind of the, the book of our lives. It's taking a good, long, hard look at how God's grace is at work within us, shaping us and guiding us and challenging us to come more fully alive. I'll admit to you that it's, it's a pretty vulnerable thing to open up and, and to share you know, your, your hopes and your struggles, your innermost thoughts and, and questions and, and name those to, to other people. We often don't get silent or still enough to recognize how God is stirring in our own souls, let alone let other people in on, on what's inside there. It's a very, very um, challenging thing that, that calls for courage from us. And so it's not surprising that after our very first night together that, that some of our women, myself included, kind of walked away saying, I'm not so sure about this. You know, this isn't really what I thought I was signing up for. But let me tell you something. Do you know what those women did? Week after week, they kept showing up. They kept sharing their hearts with one another and they kept holding space for one another to dig deeper and to discover more of God's grace. I can only speak for myself, but here's my suspicion on, on why all of us kept showing up. Where else in the world can, can you come there and not have to pretend like you have it all together and figured out? Where else in the world do people actually invite you to share your stuff and then actually listen to what you have to say without interrupting you, without trying to one up you, without trying to fix you or, or tell you that you shouldn't feel that way? Where else in the world can you find the safety to expose your own soul? A thing that can feel like a very risky thing, but that can also be the birthplace of such beautiful things. Things like love and acceptance and joy and peace and hope and healing and creativity and freedom. It is a rare place in our world indeed but we dare to dream that we can create such a place together, a place where people intentionally and deliberately put themselves in the way of God's grace so that we can be shaped and continually grow in our love for God and our love for others. One of the most meaningful moments in a typical ministry year is a service that some of us have not been able to see, the sending service for our confirmation class. It happens on the Friday night near the end of the confirmation process. Now, our goal with these young people, usually fifth and sixth graders mostly, uh, is to ask them to give their lives away in service to Jesus. So they gather for weeks studying and asking questions about faith. And at the end of the process, they go on a short trip together to serve somewhere so that we make clear that this is a way of life. Usually we go and partner with an organization that's addressing poverty in some way. The message is clear. The way of Jesus is the way of servanthood. And on the night those students leave for their service trip, before they load all the sleeping bags and luggage into the vans, and before they drive to their location and before they struggle to go to sleep and wind down at the end of that night, before they leave, we have a very special sending service. That service is a call to join Jesus as servant leaders. The students come up to the front and we reenact the night 
that Jesus spent in the upper room with his disciples where he washed each one of their feet and then said this to them, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. We tell that story and then we wash their feet. This is their initiation into the way of Jesus. Now, after that, we have those students stand before us and their parents come up and the parents anoint those children, those young people with oil, which is a biblical symbol for setting something apart or someone apart for God, priests and prophets, kings and leaders, tools for worship in the tabernacle and the temple. All these are anointed in the Bible. Each is somehow set apart for something special and important and sacred for God. God is setting us apart. That's the message. God is setting us apart for a different kind of life, a different kind of engagement with the world. It is a life of service to God. It is a life of washing the feet of other people. It is choosing to give rather than to get. It is undoing our consumer identity culture. It is a reorientation toward the world. This is what we mean by our missional word, serve. Throughout our history as a church, we have learned that it is in fact better to give than to receive. We have learned that there is a special role for the church to play inside the walls and outside the walls. Inside our walls, we serve one another to create a community that is dynamic and Christ-like. We greet each other when we come in the door. We fix each other coffee. We play musical instruments or work sound equipment or operate cameras. We train each other's children up to know and love Jesus. We counsel one another when we are struggling. We visit one another when we are sick. We pray intentionally for one another. We teach classes and facilitate groups. We each in some way discover our own unique contribution and offer it up so that there might be a special place in this community and in communities around the world that look at least something like Jesus. We are all parts of one body, Paul says, and that means that each of us are at the same time unique and united. We also serve outside the walls. Jesus gave the great commission in Matthew 28. Jesus gives us his authority and then says, go. And so there is always an aspect to our life together, which is about being sent by God. When my son signed with the University of Louisville to swim there, the coaches said, you represent us now. When we say yes to Jesus, he says the same thing to you, to me. You represent me now. And so we serve Christ to transform our city and our world. That's our vision language. Our service moves outward in concentric circles. Over the years, we have learned to focus our service outside the walls in what we call community development. That means that we focus on things that bring lasting change. We mentor children. We start preschools. We volunteer in after-school programs. We address poverty and access to food and access to opportunity. We partner with organizations to address housing and homelessness. We talk and pray and act for social justice. We support missionaries who are working to do community development in places like Roatan, Honduras. What has been remarkable is that we have been able to continue to do this community development service work during the pandemic. In fact, our work in the community set us up to have the relationships, the infrastructure, the systems, the connections in place to address needs quickly. Early on in the pandemic, we were able to distribute over 100,000 masks quickly and to a diverse swath of our community. We've been able to get food and supplies to some of the poorest of the poor in our community and around the world. We've been able to connect organizations doing work with one another and we've been able to cheer them all on. What has been equally remarkable about the pandemic is that we have also served outside the walls all on our own. And this is the goal 
anyway. Your role outside the walls happens every time you, you leave our life together and go and represent Jesus as a parent, as an employee, as a leader. And these are actually often the truest test, the toughest challenge, and the greatest witness of your service to Christ. There has been a role for each one of us in the body of Christ to play that it was only ours to do. And so many of you have stepped into that service leadership role. So many of you have done this without asking for any attention or credit. You also didn't ask for permission. You just did what you needed to do. And that is what it means to wash feet in the name of Jesus, loving people, serving one another in Jesus' name. That is what it means to serve. And so as we look forward, I invite you to join us in even greater service in the name of Jesus, that we might join God as his resurrection people, that we might be living hope to our community and to our world.